Okay, we're back again. Right? You need how how are you gonna how are you gonna love them and, and do right and all that uh, until uh, even if they're hating you and everything. You need a strong and firm foundation. You need to know the Lord and walk with Him and have a joy that no thing or no one can take away. Okay? Joy is a superpower, you know? <laughs> I know we don't use that term that much. Uh, but listen, it will help you and it will help them when otherwise you don't have a chance. Joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see, the joy of the Lord is not attached to circumstances. Okay? The joy of the Lord is not attached to circumstances. If it, if it were, then when things were good, we'd have a lot of joy. And when things were bad, we'd have none. And isn't that the way so many people live? Okay, most people live that way, uh, uh, and that's that's why they're angry and depressed and worried and troubled all the time. That same kid who's this mean, hateful person who never smiles or never laughs unless it's at something dirty or wrong. And, uh, and but it's all. But when they were a kid, they were just a happy little fun guy or girl or whatever. And now they're just angry and mean and hateful and, and troubled all the time. I never see them happy or thrilled or excited anymore. They're just mean and angry. Christians ain't supposed to live that way. You ought to rejoice and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Uh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Even when you're having the worst day of your life. Or a bad day of some kind. Joy from God is independent of circumstances. That's why Paul and Silas could praise God while they were in a dungeon. And by the way, their praise and rejoicing is what got them out of there. It's what got, got God to move. It's got what got God to look down and say, there's my child. And he loves me. And I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to do something for him. You want God to move in your life? You want God to move in your child's life? Get some joy in your life. Act like you have a God who's the greatest thing in the world. It's a great God. You want your life to get better? You want to have power with God? Start praising God. A young woman or a woman with a wayward child lost all hope. Their child got out of there and devastated her. She, she lost meaning and purpose. She'd go to work. She'd come home and didn't have no, no reason to live, uh, it seemed like. And uh, she'd become just down and out and complaining and miserable. She said, God showed her Psalms 113 verse 9. It says this. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. She said, God showed her that verse. She said, God showed me what I was missing the whole time. God told me I needed to be happy before there was something to be happy about. Pretty good. She said, he told me your attitude has got to change. She said, I had to drop the doubting, dismal, depressed, complaining attitude and actions that I was that I had that I was living, and let God start having my praise. So she stopped the negativity and started praising God. And things turned around. Listen, Satan can't handle that. And by the way, that's one of the weapons of our warfare that I taught on here a while back, the weapon of rejoicing. When things get the worst, start praising God and see what he can do. So we get, so, so, so get, get you some verses like that, okay, uh, that will help you with your situations. Put, the, put them in your life and stand on the word of God and by faith start praising God. Praise is the act of faith that lets God know you trust his promise even though it hasn't come through yet. Okay? That's pretty good. Praise is the act of faith that lets God know 
You trust his promise, even though it hasn't come through yet. I'm almost done. Jeremiah 31, verse 16 and 17 says this, Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears. For thy work is 